Good. Well, thank you very much, Jens, and, and thanks so much for having me here. And welcome. Also, good morning from my side. My name is Jan Gilk. I'm the president and chief product officer for Cloud ERP at SAP. You heard about the motto of the, this year's transformation world. It is uh, winning together. And when I think about Cloud ERP and um, the power of a shared ecosystem, I also do want to compare it, or I do often compare it with sports, and I think it's all about sports at the moment. Um, so this year is definitely a big year of sports. And the fact that we have the European Championship uh, in our country this year uh, is super exciting also for me personally, as I am a big uh, football fan. And uh, I'm really looking much, uh, very much forward to tonight uh, to see uh, our team play. And by the way, Jens, the AI says 3-1 is the result. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> but it wasn't as specific as you were earlier. <laughs> Yeah, but whether the German team will, will play like they did on last Friday at the great opening game or not, um, we will see. But what's certain is that soccer for sure is a team uh, sports. And of course, you need very talented players. You need skills, you need um, physically and mentally fitness to excel in the sport. But professional equipment and also individual skills is also not enough. Uh, you need to have also the right support from the bench uh, and behind the scenes. So personal trainers, physicians, therapists, and so on. Without them, it wouldn't be uh, possible to provide truly a peak performance. So what truly sets winning teams apart is actually the ability to execute on a defined strategy and also basically anticipate the moves of your opponent. And therefore, leveraging the right partners and leveraging the right technology is something that has absolute become a necessity uh, in professional sports. And if I look at the German Soccer Football Association, the DFB, um, they are betting on a diverse set of partners uh, that they actually rely on. And SAP is proud to be one of those partners. So we help them actually provide the needed insights into data, into analytics, um, and statistic to be best equipped, actually, uh, for the games uh, of our national team. And they are counting on cutting-edge technologies, uh, tools and services from, from SAP and from our ecosystem, for sure. And I would like to thank you, actually, everybody here in this room to be part of this ecosystem. And Jens, you mentioned that it's quite a significant number here again. Uh, and you have been an integral part of the success of SAP as well, and you will be in the future. Thank you. And, and frankly, if I think about the relevance of SAP in the business world, it's not to be underestimated. Um, you mentioned that I, I'm just coming from two weeks of Sapphire, our main customer event in Orlando, and then the week later in, in uh, Barcelona, where we actually showcase the latest and greatest, how we are leveraging technologies in our products, you know, what our portfolio is, where we are headed. And um, at the end of the day, how, the question how we can continue to help our customers bring out their best. You alluded to that as well, Jens. And one highlight I really thought was the keynote from Christian and Julia at the very beginning, where they brought many great customers on stage, but also great partners. And one of them uh, was NVIDIA, uh, who is one of the main technology providers. And I just read this morning that they are now actually the most valuable company in the world uh, by market shares, uh, by, by uh, market cap. So it's amazing to see the trajectory. And uh, maybe I should have bought some stock 10, 10 couple years ago. Actually, end of 2022 already, that would have been enough. <laughs> but it's amazing how they progress. And they said, their CEO said, that they heavily rely on SAP technology in order to support the scale that they see. And I, we, I met with NVIDIA a couple of weeks ago. I mean, it's amazing, as you can imagine, the kind of demand that they have um, for their, for their uh, chips and hardware. And to, to deliver that, I mean, it's a great problem to have, but you have to have really scalable systems to be able to fulfill uh, this demand. And he said, basically, the business world kind of lies on the shoulders of SAP. So uh, pretty big words, but also when I look into our marketing, we often talk about that 80% of all transactions run through an SAP system. And I think it shows the relevance that we have in the business world, and it shows on what kind of a 
treasure trove we are sitting, if you think about the data that is being produced in all those systems and the kind of insights that you can derive from that, we can really understand how the business world is actually running. So in fact, our technology and this, uh, uh, the great scalability of companies such uh, as, as NVIDIA wouldn't, wouldn't be possible, I would say, without the underlying uh, ERP foundation that we provide. Another great example is Accenture. Uh, they choose RISE with SAP as well, with S4HANA Private Cloud at the core. And um, they also choose SAP Analytics Cloud for their business in Ireland to increase standardization and automation. And the results are remarkable there, and it's a small unit for them, but 20% higher cash liquidity and 57,000 working hours saved in the first 12 months, leveraging AI-supported financial close. So here we also see that technology is really driving tangible business outcome. So now let's be a little bit more specific about cloud technology. And you know, we are talking a lot about cloud lately, obviously. And uh, the question is, why is that such a disruptive technology, or why has it been such a disruptive technology? Uh, and I think we are seeing the third wave of uh, disruption at the moment. If I go back to the first wave at the very beginning, it was all about driving the marginal uh, cost of content distribution towards zero. And that allowed, for instance, a small bookstore called Amazon.com to offer any book to anybody anywhere in the world. The, the second wave was really about now driving the marginal cost of uh, content storage down to zero, and that was the rise of the hyperscalers. And now we are in the th third wave. I believe it's really the convergence of cloud and artificial technology, and that will then uh, drive now the marginal cost of content creation down to zero. And who's going to be the winner? We don't know yet. But uh, as SAP, we definitely want to play a big, big part in that, and specifically in what we call uh, business AI. And only cloud technology can actually ensure continuous innovation consumption. I think that is what it's all about. And the market and our customers, they have made this decision in favor for software as a service and for cloud already many, many years ago. And therefore, upgrades, eventually, they will become a relic of the time. So, Get ready for your last ERP upgrade ever. <laughs> we'll see when that will be. <laughs> but I think that can only be achieved in an SAP managed cloud. Yeah. And uh, however, companies, they do struggle to get there. I think Jens, you alluded to that um, uh, very nicely. We know that yeah, and we appreciate that. And especially for our install base, this is not easy um, to get actually into this cloud ERP world. But moving your legacy one-to-one, -one, basically, into the cloud without any changes won't be enough from my perspective. We do understand the time pressure, and maybe SAP has caused some of the time pressure, admittedly. But I think it's there, yeah? and the, the timelines are what they are. And I know there's also a lot of cost associated with that. But even more so, it is important to really look into the transformational aspects and not just do a lift and shift and really look into how can I leverage some of the technologies, how can I leverage some of the innovation that's in the system? And how can I put myself into a position to actually stay current? Remember the last ERP upgrade ever? So it's all about simplification and standardization, and that can be achieved only through what we call a clean core. Yeah, to really uh, manage your custom code very actively in a way that it doesn't hamper uh, your upgradeability, uh, upgradeability. So the question is, what are you actually missing out if you are not leveraging the power of cloud ERP? And if you're talking about faster time to value, what is actually that value? And if I look into the evolution from ECC to S4HANA and S4HANA Cloud, I still have the discussion up to sometimes today, what is the difference? Uh, what is the value? We have fundamentally changed our architecture, starting in finance with the universal ledger. We are, built it, we are built a universal parallel accounting on top, and that really created the foundation for key innovation like the value chain analysis and also the green ledger. I will talk about that in a little bit more in a, in a minute. There's also things like solution business that allows companies to not only sell product, but also services, subscription-based, based on usage data, all combined into one offering, into one invoice, including 
recruiting, then the revenue recognition at the end. Uh, those are all things that were just not available in ECC and that are needed for companies nowadays um, to actually uh, continue to be relevant in the marketplace. So this new architecture has really laid the foundation now for many other uh, innovation that will come on top when we talk about cloud uh, ERP. In our sustainability portfolio, we are able, or the way we are looking into the green ledger is really to treat carbon like a currency. To basically look into the flow of um, you know, finance and material that has always been at the core of the value proposition of ERP, and now we are tacking the carbon to it. Yeah, so we will be able to also then post sustainability documents the same way you post uh, financial documents in the system. And that goes then end to end through the business network into scope three and will be produced in finance quality so that you can truly not only report on ESG, but account actually on your ESG activities. And I believe this will be heavily driven by regulations in the next couple of years and companies will have to go down this route. And that's why we believe it needs to be anchored in in, an, in a cloud ERP solution. The other topic, value chain analysis, I touched on that. That is a major development we are doing at the moment that really gives you an end-to-end -end offering for full transparency in your core value chain, enabling you to identify efficiencies, but also optimizing your profitability when you are producing uh, products, especially for companies that are globally distributed. And last not, but not least, business AI. What does that mean for us in cloud ERP? Joule, you heard probably about that. It's our digital assistant. You must have heard about it when you were at Sapphire. I couldn't overhear it. Uh, it's incorporated across our complete portfolio. So there's one Joule client that is then basically connected to all of our assets of all of our software products. And it will cover already by the end of the year 80% of the most relevant transactions because it is important that we actually make this relevant from the very beginning. And we did have uh, earlier attempts with Copilot, and some of you know that. And the, uh, the, the reason why this wasn't really adopted was because it wasn't relevant enough. It couldn't answer enough basic questions, and that's why we are pushing heavily right now and invest heavily to really provide uh, an 80% uh, coverage already end of the year. We have already delivered on top of that 40 AI capabilities inside of S4HANA Cloud, and there's more, 40 more to come uh, in the next 12 months. So the train of innovation is moving really, really quickly, and the momentum is here um, to increase the value. So let's drill a little bit more into um, some of the strategic themes in cloud ERP specifically, which is at the core of our RISE uh, offering and also our GROW offering. And it's based on five strategic themes. So first of all, it's intelligent. I mentioned that. Obviously, we want an inherently intelligent system that is leveraging AI technology uh, to drive, help you dr take better decisions, help you get better insights, forecasts, simulation, what-if scenarios, but also continue to automate processes. Yeah? At the end of the day, ERP in the future, it will be a highly automated uh, machine, actually, that pulls the user in only based on exceptions, yeah? and then makes already recommendations on what to do and can put those recommendations in action again in the system. Network. For me, one of the biggest opportunities we have, you know, we acquired the Ariba network years ago. Um, it works pretty well for indirect materials. We added more and more business scenarios there, also supply chain scenarios, sharing uh, inventory forecasts and so on. Uh, and that is something that really extends the end-to-end -end processes above and beyond the boundaries of your individual company. And all of you, uh, just like us, we exist in an ecosystem. We cannot exist standalone. So therefore, you want to connect easily to any kind of partner, your supplier, your third-party logistic provider, your banks, whatever it is, and we would like to provide this business network as a fab fabric to do so. And if the participants you know, run on SAP itself, then this needs to become a plug and play. On the other hand, it also provides significant amount of data. I talked about the impact that SAP has, and looking into the business network, it multiplies the amount of data that we can capture to again then uh, drive insights and additional services that will help customers you know, drive uh, additional business outcomes. Collaborative, that is all about picking the end user up where they are working. Yeah? And most of them are working somewhere in an office suite, somewhere 
um, you know, in Google. And therefore, we have very deep engineering partnerships also with those companies to really integrate then into Teams, make uh, S4 data available in Teams. And now at Sapphire, we announced the agent-to-agent -agent communication that will come between Microsoft Copilot and Joule. So there is uh, more to come to really, truly now bring together uh, the worlds of the, the office world and the, the ERP world. And I know also there we had multiple attempts in the past, but I think, again, often it's a matter of timing. And I believe the technology is ready right now. Sustainable, I mentioned that, that is for us key. Uh, the green ledger is the core in which we anchor our sustainability portfolio. And then, of course, we have services on top, like the control tower for the reporting, like uh, footprint management to help you calculate the actual carbon footprint and so on. And then finally, and that's more across theme, it's really about modularity. So the times where we have a uh, monolithic architecture is, is over in the cloud. Now we do have to react, we do have to modularize uh, our suite, and um, CNET will show later how that can look like already. But uh, in the last couple of years, we have already started to decouple many of the capabilities that used to be uh, in an ECC system to drive more towards um, uh, a flexible architecture that allows customers then flexibility also for deployment. So you see the innovation train is moving rather fast and it's fueled by AI technology. And so I do want to talk a little bit about some of the AI innovations um, that we uh, have been working on. Uh, one is to bring really intelligence into our product. Uh, we aim to move, to, to move from digital processes via adaptive processes to what we call self-driving processes. And it's similar to the car analogy. You all know cruise control, that was there at the very beginning. Very simple, actually, where the car could basically just go straight, but only straight. And then uh, the next step was really to then have uh, a self-driving car where you probably should better have your hands on the, on the steering wheel. Um, and maybe it could park already by itself, that's, that's, uh, that works. Uh, all the way to what's autonomous driving. And I have been a pleasure to visit uh, Palo Alto recently, Waymo, it's a Google company. They have actually put now autonomous taxis into the city of San Francisco and other uh, cities. So I saw those cars, they literally drive without a driver. Uh, I didn't book one, I have to admit that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's amazing where technology already is. Yeah? And, and the same will happen in software in my mind. Uh, at the end of the day, like I mentioned, the ERP will become a self-driving engine underneath uh, and it will provide you the insights that you need to steer your business to make the right decisions. And we put AI always in the context of business processes. That's why we say it has to be relevant for our customers, and that's where we can provide relevance. But of course, it also has to be reliable, so the quality of the answers is super critical, and trust is, in my mind, really the biggest thing uh, for adoption of AI in our customer base. We have to, and customers have to get the trust that some of those recommendations they actually make sense and they don't make mistakes if they execute on those recommendations. So that's why reliability and traceability and those things are really, really important for us. And I think in general in the enterprise world, it's different than you know, privately using ChatGBT. So hallucinations is something you don't necessarily want um, when, it, when it comes to business questions. And then finally, it's responsible. Yeah? We also, from the very beginning, have been very engaged also as a German company uh, in, in various ethics committees. And, uh, you know, it is important to take the bias out um, on the, of the responses, take disc discrimination out and so on. So that is also the third guiding principle for us in our AI strategy. And at the end of the day, AI will then help to harness the power of S4HANA. So it will continue to enhance operational efficiency and optimize decision making. So it's always been the value proposition of ERP, but this technology can now augment it again yeah, and help you to actually extract more from what you have. As such, we will also see then remarkable changes in the, in the way end users will interact with the ERP system. I think Joule will really change the game here. So we talk about intelligent experience. I think Joule will really drive a lot of this uh, for specifically casual users. And AI uh, uh, user experience has always been a big topic for us at SAP. And uh, for me, lots of pressure. I can feel that from many customers. Uh, you know, when do you get rid of sub GUI? You know, when is everything in Fiori? It's, it's tough, yeah? but I think Joule will help us here to leapfrog and it will be the single user interface for many, many users. And maybe it will also increase the amount of users because they don't necessarily even have to know that they are getting this answer from, from S4. So they don't need to log in to S4 through the, through the browser. 
And then we, of course, add AI capabilities to all of our operational processes and uh, functional domains, as you see here. And I do want to give you one example, uh, which is uh, visual inspection. That is something that can be applied in manufacturing processes, but also in uh, maintenance uh, processes. So we are really moving from humans that are ma marking defects on images and manually training AI models to AI being able to identify those defects itself uh, based on computer vision. Yeah, and then it will provide recommendations to the shop floor workers uh, in the manufacturing case. And Smart Press Shop is one customer that's already using it. And why is this possible? Because we shipped that already in 2020. So we have already very early on added intelligent capabilities into ERP. Gen AI is now just the next wave and the next um, push that is coming. And that frankly helps actually also open up the minds of our customers and the willingness to adopt AI driven innovation has become much, much bigger from my perspective. So we are talk working with a large railroad company here, SBB in Switzerland. Um, they talked about that at Sapphire as well. They have huge efforts to bring the trains in for inspection. And, and what they have done is they have installed cameras along the tracks that actually take picture of those pantographs. Those are the things that are mounted uh, on the roof of a train to collect the power through contact. And it's a very sensitive part. At, and the AI analysis analyzes those pictures and can tell at any point in time the shape uh, of those assets without having to bring the train in uh, for inspection. And as you can imagine, we are also now working with Gen AI and think about how can we generate pictures that do have defects on them so we can train the model even better without people having to do that. So there's more to come certainly, but at the end for a customer this is to move from a scheduled maintenance towards a predictive maintenance. And again, maintenance was always possible in ECC. Yeah? And customers use that system to run maintenance, but there's a difference between the scheduled maintenance and a predictive maintenance in terms of what the value is. And that value can be driven through those AI capabilities. Up to 50% reduction in, in inspection costs, for instance, or the quality increase that you will see. Yeah, because at the, typically it's very time intensive to inspect those parts and companies only do sampling. Now through AI it's possible to literally look at all, 100% of all the parts uh, in, man, in manufacturing and do this very, very early on so that you might find the, the errors and the quality defects also early on and not later in the process when it becomes really expensive. So this is just one example which is driving significant value from my perspective and where you also see the power of SAP then because we look into end-to-end -end processes um, here also in the maintenance space. So besides uh, some of those operational innovations that I mentioned, um, like visual inspection, I also talked there's significant value in the integration of our portfolio into an end-to-end -end cloud ERP suite. And this is something um, where we announced at Sapphire that we are bringing the sales cloud and travel uh, uh, ex uh, expense management from Conquer together with S4HANA Cloud into a suite. And that, of course, means there needs to be product truth. It means there has to be a unified experience. Of course, there has to be integrated processes that SAP manages for you uh, in a SaaS type uh, manner. And there has to be all the way to the technical level, uh, common provisioning procedures and so on. And this is what we have been working on. Um, it's basically then also in combination with our Joule AI assistant, and that will show you actually a whole new world of ERP from my perspective. It has nothing to do uh, with what you know in the past, uh, ECC-based, so I think it's really coming along nicely. And this is best seen in action and in live product demo, so I would like to welcome my esteemed colleague Sinit on stage to walk us through this demo. She had the pleasure actually to do that at Sapphire. Let's do it again. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, there are quite a few steps to make. Let's fill the gap. I want to make a deal. For some of you, I understand that you've already been to Sapphire, so you might have seen some of the things I'd like to show you. So please don't hold back on the oohs and the ahs and the applause. It, it helps me greatly. And I, in turn, will make sure to be as enthusiastic as I possibly can. Deal? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Good. Jan already introduced it. He hinted at some of the grow into innovations and I'm so happy to show them to you today. How can AI help you in your organizations? I hope you'll allow me to show me in the next seven minutes or so. Wonderful. So 
Let's do this. Imagine you are a sales representative and you are looking at your current sales opportunities. You see your leads, you see uh, the opportunities in general. And what I'd like to do here is I have a go-to hub that has all the data I need to get through my daily tasks. I want to see where my next big deal is at right now. So what I will do is I'll navigate into the deals at risk, just like that. This now shows me all the deals at risk with a lower opportunity score. And the opportunity score here that we see on the tiles indicates the probability of winning an opportunity for me. With that, I see all the different sales phases, and I can see that the four wheels deal right here is already in the quotation phase. I'm in sales, it has a higher chance of closing, so I want to prioritize it. I look into some AI insights to understand what can help me really close this deal. And with that, I see what the issue is right away here. We see that these bars have a declining trend, which means that my con communication with the customer has been pretty, pretty inconsistent. That's not great. I can also review further and see, oh, the probability of winning is actually really lower than I'd like it to be. So I know that my customer contact is already waiting for a sales quote for me, and I'll send it out right away. But we want to do it nicely, and we also need to be quick, right? There's a deal to win. So what we'll do is we'll use the help of generative AI, and what you will see now is that it will, cre it will create an email draft for me. And it's pulling from past interactions I've had with my customer contact, Maggie. We can, pre we can quickly sorry, scan, looks very good to me, so what I'll do is I'll apply it, and then the sales code plus the email we have just created will be sent out right to Maggie from Four Wheels. And now allow me to do a bit of demo magic. Our customer has been so enthusiastic about this deal, great conditions, that they've accepted right away. With that, we get confetti. Yay! <laughs> but more than that... Oh, thank you! <laughs> But more than that, some of your eyes might have spotted it. A sales order has been created automatically from Sales Cloud and sent to my Cloud ERP. And I can pull the confirmation in real time from my S4HANA system with the preview here. Fantastic. Now, we have... There we go. Now we have won the opportunity, we've won the deal, and we're sending our best consultant to be with the customer. Now, what that will mean is business travel, it equals an expense report. Now, I'm sure if I were to ask all of you who's so excited and loves to file expenses, both hands would be up just like mine. So I'm not going to ask because I already know the answer. <laughs> but what I'll do instead is I'll show you how AI from SAP will help make our consultant's life much easier. Okay, so I'm sorry if you give me one second here. There we go. So right before my trip, I can easily book it via SAP Concur right here. This will then create a report for me using all my trip details. As I use my corporate credit card, let's say a MasterCard, I can see Conquer's AI automatically built a report for me. The hotels, the taxi rides to the customer, the airfare, everything is added to Conquer automatically, and the app even notifies me in real time, as you see right here. And if you take a customer out to a business dinner, Conquer's AI will know that participants need to be added using audit and compliance checks. I'll quickly show you how that goes. So I can just add the attendees. I'll see a list of my most recent attendees, which makes it much easier for me to select. I'll quickly tap to add Abigail. Review. Looks like everybody is in. Super convenient. And the next thing and the last thing for me to do is then to quickly do a quick once over. And here you see all my expenses from the trip on a chronological timeline. See my airfare, I see the hotel I was staying in, the coffee I had, and so on. Super easy to scan and super easy to submit. And just like that, the expense report practically wrote itself. On stage, you've seen it here, and off stage, you'll have the same experience. That's a promise. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. 
thank you very, very much. You're holding your end of the deal up. I'm, I'm hoping I'll do the same. So, we want an opportunity. Our team members are traveling, um, delivering work, and their work is getting billed. One big question for all of us to answer. Are we profitable? We want to find out. And thankfully, we'll have Jewel to help us and support us in our financial analysis. As you'll be using SAP's end-to-end -end portfolio, Jewel is capable of putting high-value use cases in the hands of your employees. So I want to take out the guesswork and I want to look at some real-time facts with you. Let's go. So to keep tabs on the project profitability, I'd start my day in SAP S4HANA Cloud. Here in the insight sections, I can see an issue right away. Our recognized margin, which is indicated by this orange line, is actually below our planned margin. That's never so good. So let's find out what the issue is here. Just like that, I'm being navigated to the Project Profitability Review Booklet app. Very easy. Now this app answers the most common question that any financial planner might have. And there's a lot of underlying data here. So what I will do is I will use Joule, and I will ask Joule to analyze the booklet for me. Now what you see is that Joule analyzed 22 projects across 11 different locations for me. And what I see here is that some of our projects perform below expectations. Good insights. I want to do something about it, though. So what I will do is I will ask Jewel which projects we should tackle first. And with that, Jewel gives us the profitability KPIs for the three projects we should prioritize. This is great context. Now I will need Jewel to filter the booklet for these projects accordingly. Great. And with that, I can see the issue right away. The planned margin for our projects was 27%. And it looks like only one of the projects right here, the Digital S4 project, missed the margin slightly, whereas two of our other projects had a greater deviation. This is a great um, base to discuss it with the team, to run a whole root cause analysis. So what I want to do, and now look at the beauty of Joule, with just one click, the whole analysis that we looked at so far is being summarized. And then there's just one thing for me to do. I'll easily share it with the Microsoft Teams functions that's already available in S4HANA Cloud and now also via Joule. Just like that, I can share it with my team member and I can be done for the day. So, thank you. So, to recap some of the innovations that I've just presented to you. Using SAP and AI, you can manage your opportunities better, you can make your consultants more efficient, and you will gain financial business insights at high speed. And all of this will be available to you with Grow with SAP. It's been an enorm pleasure to present this to you today. And with that, I'm handing back to you, Jan. Awesome. Th thanks so much, Sini. And uh, you, you saw some of those innovations. And actually, that's real. So that's available now for customers that purchase Grow with SAP. You will uh, get what we had just uh, shown here on, on screen. However, I think with, AI, with the AI Assistant, you saw that. I mean, we're just scratching the surface. There's so much more uh, that is possible. And uh, I think there is um, much more to come, where we then can also make some really smart recommendations, provide some more uh, options that uh, customers and end users can take, do more simulations, and so on, all within the Joul interface. So that's uh, pretty, pretty powerful from my perspective. And that's why, as mentioned earlier, I feel this will, to a certain extent, really uh, replace um, the user experience um, for, the, for the casual user. So I think you all agree AI technology is here to stay, but probably the majority also agrees that uh, it's not so easy and it feels you don't use it yet to the full extent. And, and why is that? Yeah? Uh, what else is needed? And for us at SAP, it is the main goal to bring the innovation of our products to all of our customers. So we want you to use all the things that you have just seen. Yeah? And uh, the answer here for me is clear. While the technology is ready, the next frontier is really now adoption. 
and uh, let's stay in the sport analogy. You see the, the bike in the background. Uh, the guy who won the first Tour de France in 1903, his name was Maurice Guerin, and he had a steel bike, La Française, which weighed about 18 kilograms. <laughs> and uh, the uh, latest winner, actually, uh, last year had a bike that was weighing uh, around seven kilograms. So you see tremendous technology advances here over the last couple of years, but I think if I would just buy this bike right now, I probably wouldn't win the Tour de France, right? So it's really about technology on the one hand side, but then you have to have the discipline, and that also involves and probably changing behavior. I'm also, you know, I think I've bought, I've bought any uh, fitness gadgets that is out there, came out there in the last couple of years. The latest one is this Aura Ring here. Um, it's, it's a great uh, tool, great gadgets. It gives me all the insights on, on what I'm doing well and what I'm not doing well. The question is, do I act on it? <laughs> and typically, that is often then the hurdle. Yeah? You know things better, yeah? you have the foundation in place, but then still you have to change your behavior, and that is what makes it hard. So the good news is you have to have the right partners. If you have the right partners and you don't have to do it alone, you can actually improve the performance significantly more than you can do individually. So that's actually a good thing. And I guess the question is for no one anymore now whether they want to adopt latest technology or whether they want um, you know, to, to adapt their way of working. The question is really how. And especially in our install base, I mentioned that it is difficult. And uh, um, I mentioned it before, just hosting a legacy system uh, on a hyperscaler is in our mind not, not enough. There are efforts needed, same as for being the best athlete, for instance, to actively work on a clean core. We have been talking about that quite a bit and to show how this can be done, let me share one example. For those of you being responsible for the ERP installation, think about how long your last ERP upgrade has taken. And I think looking at some of the faces and also what I, when I talk to customers, it's probably more than a couple of weeks. Uh, in fact, many companies need more than a year to do an ERP upgrade. And just in that time, um, you know, we are spending billions of dollars or euros in R&D, yeah, in innovation, that you are already missing out during that uh, period of time. And this was also the case for Hitachi. Uh, they upgraded only every five years. You know? So think about how many releases they actually missed. And uh, dude... <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so think about how many releases they missed. Uh, but that was all due to the fact that they had a highly customized core. And that is nothing that's uncommon. Pretty much every customer has that. And through heavy reduction of their customization and keeping the core clean, they are now at only one month that a major upgrade takes for them. So I think that's a remarkable uh, achievement. And that brings them, of course, a much, much easier, easier maintenance. And an 18 time faster upgrade ultimately puts them in the position to consume all this innovation, for instance, that Sinit just uh, demonstrated. So that's, that gets us to the second question now as part of the how, the actual journey and how SAP can help here. And uh, Jens mentioned that uh, at the end of the day, this the journey leads to the same outcome. It is about driving an impactful transformation for our customer and provide them tangible business benefits. And we do offer choice. We do have uh, two different off offers in the market. One is Rise with SAP. The other one is Grow with SAP. And Grow with SAP is, is based on S4HANA Cloud Public Edition. It's always a greenfield. Yeah? You have to start from scratch. But certainly here also, there's a possibility to take over data. And I'm sure together with SNP, we'll find a smooth solution to do this even better than we can do it today. Um, typically, those are new customers that are choosing Grow. Those are sometimes install-based customers that are really starting new and start from scratch. We are focusing heavily on fast-growing companies. We are focusing also on mid-market companies. But we do have large enterprises as well. P PwC is a great example of a very large uh, professional service company that decided to go greenfield and go directly to Grow. Another scenario which we see quite a bit is the so-called two-tier scenario where the, sub where the headquarters sits on the private cloud and then subsidiaries or individual business units, they sit on S4HANA public cloud on Grow. And then, of course, there's Rise with SAP. Uh, S4HANA Cloud Private Edition is front and center here, and that is really optimized for all of you in the room that convert their existing ERP asset. 
And new customers, those are sometimes also new customers in very complex environments that might decide to even go from scratch or start new. It can be a multi-step, sometimes starting with a lift and shift exercise. Very often I see those what we call blue field uh, uh, implementations, which is really all about selective data transformation. And that is where we have been working a lot with SNP. Uh, and of course, there's other partners out there. But I think it is super important um, that this is helping customers to accelerate the transformation, to get from A to B, but already capture benefits. Yeah? So not just lift and shift and not just taking over the legacy, but really go targeted and say, hey, those are the things I do want to do from scratch here. I do want to do, adopt some of the new things that SAP delivers and some things you don't need to touch, so just bring them over. So that's why I think this is a, an offering that is uh, taking up a lot of interest in the market. Also, when I talk to our customers, I feel this is something that comes more and more. And then, of course, we are leveraging Signavio always as part of RISE to do the analysis. What is the as is? Where's, where's the baseline? What are the benefits of adopting standard processes and how can you get there? And as part of RISE, we also have now launched a methodology for RISE migration and modernization. So we are actively working here together with our partners to explore ways to drive clean core compliant migrations to RISE. So you see it's all about time to innovation, shortening the implementation time, shortening the migration time. And this is an offering that's consistently evolving. If you compare RISE, in 2021 with it, when we launched it to where we are today, it's already a huge step forward and the next phase will be having a heavy focus on our partner ecosystem. You saw what uh, Jens uh, showed, showed earlier with their partnerships with SmartShift, Tricentis and so on. So we really want to give our customers the whole package for this transformation. Um, so we will also then recommend to customers which third-party tools to use and to drive the implementation costs down and to uh, accelerate the migration. And SNP is certainly one of those partners. And we are also looking here at customer incentives in the context of this program because we acknowledge that customers have spent a lot of time and money to move to S4 on-premise. So we want to take some of the financial burden and help them to do that now, actually, the migration uh, to RISE itself. Uh, so therefore, there is credit available to offset some of the costs for maintenance services or other cloud subscription. Then there's partner incentives as well, of course. Yeah? For our tool partners, we are in the process of defining kind of a badge that is really based on clear business criteria. And this will not become a general certification under Partner Edge, but rather an endorsement and recognition program so that customers actually understand those are our preferred partners we want to work with. So more to come on that one uh, as well. So let me close by talk about and show you some example, handful of uh, customers from different business and sizes that have gone down this road with us, that have decided for Rise with SAP or for Grow with SAP. So let's start with Mayer. Mayer is fostering the global energy transition to innovate. And then with operation, their operations span 45 countries. And they're embracing decarbonization while staying nimble in those, those ever-changing markets. Their implementation time took only eight months um, with, with the private cloud. Uh, Ceva is one of Europe's leading um, photo service providers. Uh, who help customers turn their photos into a wide range of high-quality products. They went with S4HANA Public Cloud and it, they managed to increase their order processing cap capacity sevenfold and reduce manual payment processing time by 50%. So also here, very tangible outcomes that those customers have achieved. Nestlé, I don't need to talk about what, who Nestlé is. Obviously, one of the largest customers that we have and the largest publicly traded food and beverage company in the world. RISE, again, helped them to improve availability, agility, and speed and deployment, new system and business processes. And also, they actually um, they moved 1,200 terabytes into our um, uh, RISE environment. And, and that also shows you that we can handle any type of scale, any type of volume. We are operating the largest private cloud uh, for SAP in the world. Uh, so therefore, there is no customer that is too big that we wouldn't be able to, to operate. And then finally, and we had you on stage already, BMW, I think this is an amazing story, an amazing transformation story, a very complex one, uh, but one where also the shift to rise allowed BMW to shave some time off of their, of their project timeline. And I know many of the partners in the room are involved here uh, with BMW, and that's what I referred to at the beginning. Customers expect 
a team, uh, and a team that consists of SAP plus partners to help them in this transformation. So, in closing, for me, there is a lot of opportunity ahead of us out there. And companies in all industries, they need to continuously reinvent themselves to stay relevant in the marketplace. We believe Cloud ERP will be an enabler to help to bring out the best in our customers, for sure. You saw some of the innovation, I hope, that is coming, that is already there. And the role of our partners and the ecosystem will be much more relevant even in the future than it is today. Because again, uh, customers count on a winning team. They count on all of, of us that is able to accelerate the transformation to them, that bring the cost down and actually show them the benefits of true cloud and AI world in which we all are and help them to drive tangible business outcomes at the end. So I want to close with a quick uh, promo here. Um, I would like to encourage everyone to check out the pop-up campus that's right in front uh, of the arena here uh, from SAP. That's the SAP truck. There you can learn a little bit more about SAP Signavio, the business technology platform, but also s for Public Cloud. And of course, feel free to reach out to me personally anytime. So thank you very much, and have a good transformation world. Thank you.